Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. We are continuing assessing season. Uh, we're on midfielders. We've done the uh, season review, so I hope you've watched that. We've assessed how the defence did and reviewed that, mm. and we're now on to midfield players. Yes. And be an interesting one, this, uh, for the midfield. Um, without going through it all right now, I think one thing I can stay straight off the bat is we don't score enough goals mm. from the midfield, do we? Uh, and the player who we least expected to, to score the most goals ended up probably scoring the most goals uh, for midfield players. Mm. For uh, clarification, Abdelai the Corre has been included. Some might say controversially by Ned with the four players. So there you go. Uh, but we are starting this review of the season uh, with the midfield and we are starting with Amadou Onana. Mm. Uh, let's have a look at his numbers from the season. 30 matches played, two goals for Amadou Onana, zero assists, 85% passing accuracy and four big chances created. Mm. Uh, just look, I mean, his heat map is everywhere. Amadou Onana, Pet, he... I don't think it. Well, it maybe he does. Maybe he does split opinion. Mm. I think a lot of people do appreciate that he is a very good player. But I think also, and probably correctly, a lot of people look and think it feels like some games he should really be just yeah. controlling the game. The, the stature of him, we both rate him highly. Mm. But I do accept when people say, "Yeah, there's games he just goes mi not missing, mm. but he's there's no influence from." Do you, do you think part of that is down the fact that? A lot of people feel like he's got one foot out the door. And it, it, it's like a mental thing of not accepting him. I don't, you know what? It's weird, right? Because he's, all he's done since he's been here is say how much he loves yeah, it. Yeah. So it's not like, I know there's a lot of noise. I think the problem I'm going to do has got is there's been a lot of noise over him from the moment we got him. We yeah. beat West Ham, so, you know, he was, he was signed for West Ham and we done a very un Everton thing and went and took him off them which is mad he yeah. shows us over them and then if you if you remember rightly the first transfer window he was here which was the january there was rumors that chelsea and arsenal wanted mm. him being here like five months yeah. and i think then people have identified that he is a player who he's a player who people will always link with and move away so i don't know whether subconsciously yeah people have gone he's gonna go anyway and i've part of from that. Yeah, I, I think subconsciously, I think people have never truly f like got attached to Onana because yeah. he's always been that player that you think you're gonna flip anyway. Yeah. So I think it's 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 something I don't got, don't get me wrong. It's not an Everton thing. I do think it's a modern football thing of when you don't want to get attached to players, so you yeah. so you keep yeah. them at arm's length. Um, and don't get me wrong, that's not people... I, that, when I say that, I don't believe that's people finding fault in what he does. Mm. I just think it's easier to criticise. Because we have a lot of players, and I've said this loads of times, we have a lot of players at Everton that are going to be at Everton for a while. Yeah. And even when they play poorly, people will not criticise them, them. Because they, yeah, they protect them. Mm. And I'm, again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing either. I'm not saying that's the wrong thing. But I think with Onana, there is a thing of, you're going anyway, mate. You probably should have gone last summer. So it's easy to, so it's easy to, to mm. attach blame to things. I think Onana is a is a very very good footballer who does has who does have very very good attributes. Mm. I think he he can break a press really really well, mm. taking the ball off the defence of the goalkeeper. He does get not lazy. Lazy is not the word. I think he loses focus in games, mm. and I think some of his passing becomes becomes lethargic. And I think he gives the ball away when it's easier to um, put a ball somewhere where you easier you know sometimes he'll try the hard pass mm. and it doesn't quite work now <laughs> at another club at a club that wants that risk mm. or has players who are switched on the same th way i think he'll i think he'll go far mm. i think this summer in the euros i think he'll i'm not going to say he's going to play it so much but i think he'll do well and i think mm. when he plays for belgium you see that side of things and that's why people are excited about him sometimes he's a funny one sometimes you watch him and you go oh, Look at this, look at that. And you look at his numbers afterwards and he's won every tackle and his pass completion's really good mm. and everything's really high. But you know yourself when you've watched him, you thought, yeah, but it could all be so much better. I think that's the thing, is that his numbers are good, but I think they can always be better. Mm. So it's 
he falls into that space of people, if we lose him, people, and also because we have to sell, people will go, I don't mind losing him. Mm. Yeah, he is, he is, I think he's, he's brilliant. I think he's got, sorry, let me rephrase that, he's got the attributes to be brilliant. I mm. think there's times when you see how good he is, I think his tackling's tremendous. Um, but I do, I, there's been moments when he has elevated himself in games and he has dictated the game. I think he can get from one end of the pitch to the other really quickly, but I don't think he does it. Enough. It's been recorded, hasn't he? He's one of the fastest players for sprints this season. I think he's like fifth or something or whatever it is. Um, he just doesn't do it often mm. enough. We've seen those moments. Yeah. Um, I remember in his first season in that Southampton game when they beat us when Lampard was still a manager at home. Mm. He was, other people let him down. He was magnificent, but then he dropped off. But that... Arsenal, when we beat them on Dice's first game, he was amazing. Like a tremendous game. We won the game 1 0. The other side of him is he isn't a box to box midfielder. No, and no. People want no. him to be a box to box mm. midfielder. So that's another side of it. Mm. People's expectation of what he is as a player doesn't match up to what he is. And mm. he, he's a number six. He's a modern number six who. who, who He's not a playmaker, because I think his stats show he's not a playmaker. Yeah, absolutely. But what he is is a modern player who links the player mm. from from back to front. I think he should score more goals. He probably should with his height and yeah. certainly the way Everton play with set pieces. Mm. He doesn't shoot too often because he doesn't no. get in the areas to shoot. Mm. But I think he's one of them where we're, we're helping him along his way. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's just one and of maybe those that's, things. Maybe that's and that's why. just one of those things. Maybe that's and if why. we make good money on him, or we make any money on him, then you'll then he is one in a few years that'll you know, could be one that does something in a huge game and you go, Oh god. Remember when we but had him. Remember when we had him, but I I like him as a player. I just yeah. he's just maybe not a player for Everton right here, right now. Okay, so he's over the so for score rating for the season seven point zero six, which is which is a good number. It's uh, started twenty three of those thirty games. Um, just looking at his, his passing accuracy, yeah, eighty five percent, forty five touches a game, uh, created four big chances, uh, tackles per game two point four, mm. which is quite high. Five point three ball recoveries per game. Dribble past 0.7. Uh, zero errors leading to a goal. So, yeah, he's a good player, and I think, but I do think people will go, well, if we can get money for him, we know he's going to go anyway. Mm. We may as well take that. Um, one player who I think is brilliant, I've loved him all the time. Yeah, he's been all here, the time. Um, I think he's an, this player's another one who, when we sort of knew he was going, you were just like, Right, we'll get someone who's a bit more progressive than them, then yeah. we'll get the money in. And ironically, when we knew he was going, he, he turned in his best performances. It is, of course, a Trisha Garner guy who has ended up scoring some very, very key goals mm. for Everton late on in the season to secure our status, really. But he's a player who I've, I mean, we've, we've disagreed with. With people all season. Yes. Yeah. Only a few don't get me wrong. No, he is someone I will but go to some, I will go yeah, to bat. I, I will I, I will go to bat I will for, go for, to bat and get all day long. And people have said to us on various shows throughout the season, he's not good enough, he's not this, he's not that. He's our best midfielder by a by a some margin for me, because you know what you're getting mm. every time. He works his socks off, he's had the goals. People, there's this thing of he gives the ball away too cheaply. Well, we'll have a look at his, uh, his games now. There you go. This is heat map. It's everywhere. Um, 25 games this season. Four goals from Adrissa. No assists, but 86% passing accuracy. I can't see the big chances because it's over. I think it might be one big chance. He certainly isn't someone who creates chances, no, really. No, that's not his role. Even though he started off at Lille as a number 10. Mm. Um, but he's sure, I think he's brilliant for he us. Brilliant. And he's key, and I'm absolutely... Made up, he's staying for at, another year. At the beginning of the season, people were clamouring for James Garner to get into the team. Mm. The new shiny thing, everyone mm. wanted him in. Everyone knows mm. that he's the Birkenhead Perlow. You know, Steve Kelly loves him. I love, I love, loves him. Steve, doesn't he? Um, and it was he, he, fo in football. You do have situations where people start clamouring for something else mm. and start almost trying to find ways to get other players out the team, mm. players who've been there for ages, players they might be a little bit bored of, players who 
don't seem to be dead, dead fancy or do anything amazing. We live in an era of, you know, uh, very short YouTube packages and TikToks and people judging players via football manager and, and, and um, you know, EA24 and all this kind of thing. And we want all the shiny stuff. Mm, FC24, just for clarification. But carry on, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> You're a slave to market, and you. <laughs> um, and well, they didn't pay us, so I wasn't going to name them. No, I'm a fair. So, <laughs> you, yeah, but you named the brand. I just named what a game's called. Well, anyway, carry on. Maybe carry I'm on. looking for the money. Carry um, on. Oh, and, and and people wanted them. People wanted them out the team. So yeah. not everyone. Some people. Yeah, yeah. The educated ones wanted less them in. Um, Most, I think. Wanted and them and in. I think he's just been so important to us this season and mm. towards the end of the season. I mean. So obvious that he wasn't playing in the Chelsea game, you know, mm. and and I think when he's needed to stand up, he's st I what I know what I think, and I don't know this for a fact, obviously, but it just looks on the eye. Is after the Chelsea game, he he stood up as in like a leader, and I'd never seen that before, almost mm. before him. I've seen a fella who is probably really important in the dressing room, mm. part of a contingent, and he's always had this with some of the foreign players, mm -hmm. some of the French-speaking players, some of the African players, <clears throat> and has always been there as someone who sort of crosses over, in a way, mm -hmm. as someone who's got a foot in both camps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really feel like, towards the end of the season, that he, his leadership qualities really come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And really, beforehand, he seems sort of quiet and just... not a bit. He's never been a bit part player, but just someone who was like... Just, just got on and just done a shot. Really, no, but what I saw towards the end of the season is a player that was genuinely playing for the love of Everton. Like, mm. he, you know, he's given it all. I was at, at the Emirates, and when he scored, it was like he he, 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 he properly loved it. And he, he every time he scored, and I don't know, it's that little Dan Juma. He, that, if Dan Juma can't play or can't score, I'll just score and do a celebration. Do How about celebration. that? Yeah. How about that? Um, Looking for solutions. Exactly. So I saw a player that really sort of grabbed hold of the situation mm. where maybe some other players couldn't or, di or didn't mm. and said, I'll, I'll do this then and took it upon himself. And it, and I think I think when we've heard the quotes from him as well, when he was at Paris Saint-Germain and he's trying to convince Messi and um, Mbappe to watch Everton games and stuff like that, you see a player that obviously really has a deep love for this football club. And I think we have to embrace that I... massively. In fact, I've just ordered a, a Disagana gay Everton top for the studio because I think he, 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 he that's, deserves it. He deserves that, that's that. like the ultimate accolades from you. <laughs> but, you know, he deserves it. On the, it'll go on the wall. I think the thing with him is, um, is a clang here. Go on, right. Plan go away. When I, when I was speaking to Seamus Coleman about the, the no, but it, this the reason why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. Right. Is because if Seamus Coleman told me it was Friday today, I'd yeah. have to check because I love him and I mm. believe everything he says. And he's not one I don't think that just says things for effect. Mm. But he was saying how important he is yeah. in and around the club at yeah. this guy. How important he is, and, and some people might just go. Oh yeah, whatever. But I think you're right. I think what it's it. I think he's loved. He loved it the first time he was here. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He loved Everton. But that opportunity to go and play with Messi and play him. Yeah, no one will ever criticise him. No, that's Champions League. <laughs> no, and, and you know what? When we sort of knew he was going, and he didn't get that move in January because yeah. we couldn't sell him. He was brilliant until he left. He didn't sulk. No, he stepped, stepped up. He was brilliant. And he came back and you heard what it was like. That I only wanted to come back to Everton and I'm home and this, that, and the other. And he loved it. Absolutely loved it, and he's been. He's. I think he's just been one of those players who will go in and do his job. He yeah. goes in and he gives everything, yeah. and he get and people like him. But you're right. I think after that Chelsea game, I think people looked around at each other. We certainly did, and we're like, "This is terrifying." Mm. That result is terrifying because mm. they weren't. We've been as pretty this before, but I I do think he stood up and gone. No, not a chance. And he mm -hmm. was back in. He scored the first goal against Forest. In that key game, and yeah. from then, yeah. he's he's been absolutely he mag magnificent in the Merseyside derby. Just mm -hmm. brilliant, just a real top footballer. I love him, and I'm made up his ear. And I I just wonder if some people were thinking, well, he's getting on now, man. We can get mm. right where we are right now. He's perfect for us. And I just think when someone like Seamus Coleman stands up and says he's he's so important I, and his character's I know, brilliant, he's I know a lot of goal. people. I know a lot of people question them coming back from Paris Saint Germain. But I, I think I think it was a it was a good signing and I think the money we paid for him 
is um, you know buttons, mate. buttons compared but what you get compared to what buttons. some other plays you get and and them not he has just come back in like he was never away and as I said like consistent all season loves this club popped up in key moments mm. and so noticeable when he hasn't played mm. and I think towards the end of, I think them we 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 talked about at the beginning of the season we said the manager had a Ghana problem a dis, a, not a dis a Ghana guy a James Garner problem mm. he wanted him in the team but he didn't know how to get him into mm. the team and. That sort of, that was an issue where people were looking at this kind of game going, oh. and there were, was times in the season where it, it felt like it was easier to drop a this kind of guy, and it's mad now looking back thinking it almost it was easier to yeah, drop. Him. I get you see James Garner. Well, look, we're going to come on to James Garner. I think he's done sound. I think he's a nice little footballer. I think the problem is sometimes when he's played with Onana, they both wanted to occupy the same space, mm. and therefore he's struggled a little bit. I think James Garner was really good with the core, ironically. And when he sat mm. in a two, I think he's had some really good games. I'm saying yeah. that's perfect. Him oh, and no, Adrissa, I think him and Adrissa are, are good in midfield as well. I think mm. because he does like, he's he's not as, for me right now, James Garner, we're going to come on and look at his numbers now. He's not as good as Amadou O'Nana in some things. No, but, he, but he's doesn't, He's. I think you get a more consistent no, I think, level I think, from James Garner. No, I think if we are just like transitioning yeah, into James Garner, I think the difference is is that when you play a Drissa Garner game... Hang on, the Drissa Garner game, sorry. Go on, go on. Scope score, 7.04 again, so above 7. Um, 25 games started, 24 of Everton's mm. games, 4 goals, expected goals, 1.3, got 4. Um, passing accuracy, 86%. Uh, 48 touches a game. Mm. Uh, interceptions a game, 1.1. 2.9 tackles per game. 7 Ball recoveries a game, which is by far the best. I think. So, I think just on a really Jason Garner gay, yeah, yeah. talk about going to James Garner. Is a Jason Garner gay? A lot of the time, it is who you put next to him that that defines how he plays in a game. Yeah. And I think sometimes if you play someone next to him who's a sitter, yeah. then he can push forward like we've seen in the last few games. But James Garner, I think we saw James Garner just a Garner gay at Brighton, and the pair of them just sat mm. in front of the back four. And they played as like two blockers. Very nice. And they just sat and they didn't let, they just screened the back four, both of them, cut mm. off all the passing lanes, forced Brighton wide. And I mean, and we, we did concede from across, fair play. But mo marking. most of the game, we dealt with it really mm. well. Mm. And that's the beauty, that's sort of like, the, that's where I think maybe at times we, when we're talking about forcing plays into the team or how you change the team, that's it's sometimes being changed on the setup. Onana sits deep. And James Garner, James Garner, at times, unfortunately, fell into a, a position where he was in a very similar position to Onana when mm. he played in games with him. And that's the problem. It's like it felt like towards the end it was James Garner or Onana because they occupied the same... Mm. They do different jobs, yeah. but they occupy the same space. Mm. And I think I think James Garner this season... I think, that, you know, last season we know he suffered from injuries, mm. took him time to get into it. Uh, towards the end, we started seeing little, little good shoots... And I think this season what we've seen is a player who has settled into being a Premier League player. Mm. Listen, he's not amazing. He's, there's, there's no... There aren't that many bells and whistles. He's just a very, very hard-working, professional midfielder that you need in your squad. Mm. Should he be starting for Everton if Everton want to be successful? That's debatable. But he has an opportunity to grow... Because he is starting from the from the bottom, as mm. in he'd never been a Premier League player before no, he joined Everton. Mm. He was a Man United player, but he was a he was a he was a Championship player. I think this season he's he's you can see he's combative. Mm. He's a he's a, the Brentford game I thought was probably his best game in an Everton shirt that I've seen at uh, home. Yeah, yeah, he was all over the pitch. Mm. He was all over the pitch. He really really got stuck in. And winning those tackles, doing the for the way, if you doing the screen. No, well, he played off the right no, that day, no, didn't he? Loads of you know, mm. And I think he's going to play thirty odd games in the Premier mm. League, isn't he? Or mm. you know, there or thereabouts during the season. So you you need more. You need to add more you know, to that. But he's got yeah. time to grow mm. and add more to his own game, and it'll be up to him to to see how he develops. But he's had a very solid season yeah. without being remarkable. Mm. I'd like him to add more goals to the game. I think yeah. he has to do that. Yeah. I think he has to... I think his set pieces that he was lauded for when he was at Forest mm. have to improve. Mm. 
But he has to start getting an areas around the box where you where he has a dig, yeah. and he tests the goalkeeper. And the more he does that, the more the more he gets confident, doesn't he? He's got a good shot on him as well. I'm sure his goal against Bournemouth, mm. which is the only Premier League goal he scored, mm. which was a lovely finish. Mm. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think get in around the box, have more shots, mm. have more. I think he's a good player. Mm. I think he's got room to grow from 23. Let's have a look at his numbers anyway from the season. 37 games in the Premier League for Everton this season. One goal, uh, two assists, passing accuracy 83%, big chances created seven. So for score, he's actually higher rated than Adrissa Gay and Amadou Monana, mm. 7.09. Um, due to more games played as well, of course. But he's he's turning in to be a good, a good player for Everton. Again, I think you're right. I think it's key how we, we the make up of the midfield. And I think if you add, this is where it can sometimes be skewed by Abdelai Decore, Everton's yeah. midfield three. Because if you add Adrissa Gay and you add James Garner, and then you add a more creative player where Decore was, yeah. then James Garner can go and win it and just mm -hmm. give it and stuff. I think sometimes. You're, you're hoping the two are going to do a bit more yeah, yeah. than what they're in the team to do. Or if you had really good wide men, like fast wide men and stuff, who got more goals, they'd win it and just pop yeah, it off yeah. to them. I think sometimes you look at everything because you want, you need more because we are limited in the goal, the goal um, department, aren't we? We proved that again. But I think he's had a good, solid season, like you said. Good player, good age. I think he can grow and you can always improve and. We'll just see. We'll we'll see I, how we go with it. I want better though. I mean, I want, I want better. We want better. I want, I want, I want better. I don't think there's it. anyone in my in this. I, I think he's. I think he's a player who's, as I said, is a really sort of solid. And he's, he can play in a few positions. Yeah, yeah he's a well. solid Everton kind of player. But mm. but I, I do I do want better. I want someone in there who's got a little bit who got more to to his game. But then, and if that happens, then it's he has to step up and match that. Well, of course, and that's what you always mm. want, don't you? And did score as well, of course, at Aston Villa in the Carabao yeah. Cup. It was a good goal. Um, just as looking at his passing, expected assists uh, 3.74. He's got two assists from that. Averages 46 touches a game. He's created seven big chances this season. Uh, passing, I guess he'd be done. Just have a look at his defensive qualities mm. 1.2 interceptions a game, 2.2 tackles a game, four and a half. Ball recoveries again. He's made one error that has led to a goal, but good solid season. Um, on to Andre Gomez. Let's have a look at his numbers. Uh, 12 games in all in the Premier League, one goal, no assists, 83% passing accuracy, big chances created. Naught is that, or is it six? I can't tell. Ned, naught, no big chances. I'm gonna say six, fair enough. But Andre Gomez, of course, who has left Everton Football Club now, but he, I think 12 games are probably more than people expected him to play. I think when he came back from Lille, he'd played 27 games in league mm. in last season and yeah. got two goals for Lille. And he'd come back and I think it, people were like, he's going to move. And Lille mm. still wanted him up until deadline yeah. day, but someone, they were trying to sell that collapsed and therefore he didn't get him. There was all the talk about Saudi Arabia. He got an injury as well. Um, how, how unusual. And that's been sadly that's been the story since he became no, permanent. He's, 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 isn't he's, it? he's made a play though. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's, that's that's ultimately that's not his fault. That's just a, a lovely footballer mm. that unfortunately isn't made for a league like the Premier League, mm. um, and just doesn't have that little bit of pace. No, you're right though. I mean, astonished that he played that many games mm. because I think. He came back, what, over Christmas? he come on in that cameo against Spurs. <laughs> he was absolutely brilliant yeah. and obviously scored as well. But he was brilliant that day. Yeah. And the flat, he just, there was flashes of that, of that Andre Gomez that we'd had on loan. Yeah. And who obviously, Andre Gomez is probably technically one of the best players Everton have had for years. As in, like, I bet you if you watch them on the training ground oh. every day or his, his own skills. Touch, I bet yeah. you he's got. I bet you, and we know because he, he he moved to Barcelona at the, at, at the height of Barcelona, mm. but he just can't put it all together, and no. his body has broke down on many times, and he gets these niggly little injuries that force him out, and 
It's but a, he did play. He played thirty odd games in France in a slower league. I know that's what I'm saying. No, that's Premier what I'm saying. No, his just, body, his yeah. body just can't play in the Premier League yeah, and, yeah. and the tough conditions of the Premier League. Yeah. And but there's a there's such a good footballer in there, and I think mm. I, I do think like half of his career has been wasted, sadly. Yeah. Between going to Barcelona and and yeah. then sort of years at Everton, mm. it feels like he's been at Everton for five years. Mm. It was the in, the injury, wasn't it? The sun tackle there. He'd had them mm. on loan, he was really good, but, but he, he did have a Trisha Garnick gave him. Listen, he came in, there was a couple of decent performances in there. He scored Everton's only direct free kick. That he did. scored for five fair years, fair play to him in the cup, yeah. yeah. There was a couple of decent performances mm. in there, and, mm. and I think I think everyone likes Andre Gomez. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, 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 it's sad when a player leaves, you know, without sort of... Not any fanfare, because he doesn't really deserve fanfare. Mm. But there is that sadness of, like, what could have been with a player like him or what could have been in circumstances being slightly different or if you haven't got the injury with Son and stuff. And I do feel like we'll look back and be like, oh... You can look at a play sometimes and go, you've got you've got fun memories of them, but they aren't actually football memories. They're sort of everything else. If that You're makes... talking about the hoax, aren't you? No, I'm talking about everything. He's just a... He just seems like a really lovely person. Mm. And it's like... He, he he just seems like a really nice person, but yeah. but the memories aren't football ones. They are just it's like so yeah you you write all the other stuff that he was prepared to do as part of being a footballer for Everton, um, and there's a sadness in that mm. for me. It's it's I don't know what it is. It's just a bit weird, isn't it? It's but ultimately you know he he probably gave us more this season than we have, we thought, and for a for a squad that was very limited he's, size wise. He's come on and he's he's played in some games. He's been at Everton for six years. Six years, five a year, yeah, alone. A year long. That's what I'm saying. Five he's been at Everton for six years, mm. more than any other, more than any other other his clubs, and for, and and any other probably for a lot of a lot more than any other players that we've had. And yet, bar like very small moments, you can't actually you can't actually go. Oh, he was amazing in that. He was amazing in that. You know when he first come and. Remember the game he played at uh, Old Trafford, and everyone was like, "Wow!" And then in the in, in Aranfield, the infamous derby mm-hmm. where he should have scored and we should have come away from something. And all the like best moments of his Everton career have been like overshadowed by something else. And it's it is sad, but you ultimately City go. He didn't actually do anything in six years either. He played a hundred and fourteen games mm-hmm. for Everton, um, and scored four goals yeah. in six years. And I don't so, actually remember too many of them being in games that we won either. Mm, so well, the, the greatest, the best goal he scored for us was uh, was against Wolves, Wolves at home. When, got he, when he was on loan, but we lost three one. Mm. Scored a diving header at Hull in the FA Cup when we won. <coughs> but that was a game he scored. A tr- no, <laughs> but no, he's won the four goals he scored. Two, two we won in the yeah. FA Cup in the Premier League. The two we scored, yeah. we lost. Yeah. But now, lovely footballer like oh. you say, and it is a pity because you look back and you go. Oh, he was really good, you know, and that injury curtailed him, and, and it is one of them. But it is, I mean, it's But so... even, like, weird moments, like when he came back after his injury against Arsenal off the bench, and he was, was brilliant. Sadness. He was absolutely brilliant. And people were like, oh, wow, time, wow, he's back, oh, my God, and he come back ahead of time. And yet, I don't know, he just, there's just, he's a player who just, I don't know, he just never did it, did he? And it's, it, it, there is a, there's a sadness in that, mm, like definitely. in that dog's eyes. I think he could go and play. In Portugal. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Be, and be excellent. Because Maybe he could go and be, become a male model. No, if he wants that. We know that, don't we? But he could go and play in, in Portugal, where it's just a little bit slower and still be very, very good. Yeah. You know, he's very good at Lille. Like, he wants to keep him just the money. 6.69, now the lowest rate so far. I'm though. looking forward to him in about 10 years' time when he starts doing the after-dinner circuit around Liverpool and North Wales. It'll be tremendous. It'll be absolutely tremendous. Dave Cocky, get on the phone. <laughs> um, Ned's included, some will say controversially, but he's included Dwight McNeil. Controversial that he's put the wide men in the midfielders and put the That's Gore it. in the in the forwards. Yeah. But fair play to him, so let's have, listen, fair play. let's have a look at Dwight McNeil. Uh, 35 Premier League games for Everton this season. Look at his heat map. Uh, three goals for the Blues from an XE of 3.44, so just slightly underperformed there. Six assists, which is very, very good, mm. but from an XA of eight over eight. Um so teammates. And he had more than that, obviously, because of the, the, the cup competitions, I think. As of well, course, yeah, this is just Premier League, by the way. Uh, Dwight McNeil, how have you rated him over the season? I think last year, when Sean Dykes mm. come in the second half of the season, he didn't half step up and yeah. obviously ended Everton's top goal scorer. Brilliant. Mm. Me personally, 
I don't think he's been as good this season. I think he's had moments when he's been very good. Yeah. Created things. Yeah. I still I'm unsure about him as a left winger. Yeah. I still think when he comes inside, he offers more. But he's had a, a solid season, would you say? No, I wouldn't say he's had a solid season. Wouldn't you? No. I think okay. the injuries... The have, numbers, though? No, I, I think the injuries have have um, had an effect. Mm. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Start, I always, I always, started injured, I always think that a player who doesn't complete pre-season always... Well, it's I think it's more than think. I think there's pretty no, good not. evidence yeah, yeah. over watching football that players who don't complete pre-seasons mm -hmm. really struggle to get going during the season. Yeah. And his was really bad because he... Went off in the second to last um, pre season against Stoke with the a last minute as well. Like, I think it was a ligament injury. Yeah. I Didn't come back till Sheffield United and he was nowhere no. near ready for Sheffield no. United, by the way. No. I think that was. They just rushed them. I think he? that was a little bit silly bringing him back because we had that two week break. Mm. And he never got going and he didn't really catch fire till, till November, December time. Mm. And then we know we had the problems off the pitch. Yeah, of course. And of course, you've, you've got it. You have to talk about that when it, when you're yeah. talking. It's a, he's a human being. Mm -hmm. And he's actually, well, and he's only he? a young lad. Yeah. And so he's had off the field stuff. Mm. Um, and then, again, sort of to when we hit the second good patch of form, yeah, yeah. he come alive again. He did, yeah. And I don't think the... Cons the, the, problem with, the problem with Dwight McNeil is, is that he ain't a left winger. It mm. just he just isn't. No. He hasn't got the pace no. for a start, and he, he he's so one he's so left footed. Mm. He's so and a lot of people will go, well, yeah, but load, like Messi and Maradona, they will. But the problem is with being so he, he's so left footed. But I mean, I can't believe you just picked two. Of the no, I know, but people will say two. Yeah, but people will say two of the greatest players were, all, were yeah. also so left footed. Mm. He, listen, Mac Messi, we all know. Mm. Um, He's so left foot. Like, that's his. That's his name on yeah, computer games. I, on. I didn't say it. Go on. Um, he's so left footed, but mm. he doesn't know how to get himself out of trouble mm. without doing that like reverse turn, yeah. like you're trying to get out of a. You know, in Austin Powers when he's in the little scooter yeah. and he's trying to get in out the that. tunnel. Yeah. Mm. He doesn't quite know how to get out of situations because he is so so left. He, do, mm. he can't like slalom. He goes backwards and he has to go. So towards the end of the season, you've started seeing him playing in this position where he drifts off the left and almost goes so to the right hand side mm. that he on his left foot. Mm. So the question is, why not play him on the right then? Because I think people are just show him on the outside and he can't use his right foot. But I think if you the, if you think about when he plays on the left, yeah, all he has to do is get half a yard. His left foot's that good. But my half argument yard, to that is, but on the right. If my argument to that is genuinely, if I was playing right back against him, I'd show him onto his left foot. Mm. I'd keep him on his no, left of foot. Of course, you because would. if you show him onto his, if you show him onto his right foot, he's not going to do nothing. But if you push him to the left, mm. what's he going to really do? And I think we've seen that this season that defenders push him I to mean, his, push him to his. No, but I think he likes. He likes coming inside on his left foot. Yeah, but I think he's been tried a couple of times on the right. No, but tried, so ineffective. But I, but I think because it's, it's well, we, we're gonna go yeah. to Jack Harrison in a minute. But he's someone who wants to play more I on think, the left. I think but he's that on the right. I think that is a genuine option for him, though. But I, but I actually think, I actually think, and I don't need to be a genius to wait this out. If we had a left left back who could right. get up and down the pitch, mm. Dwight McNeil coming inside into that position, yeah, opens up so much space and so much opportunity mm. that it could be so... Yeah, if it was like Luca Dean yeah, it playing could, in front of you're, you're unbalancing the opposing team. Mm. by, And this is what Villa do quite yeah. a lot, is you're yeah, forcing yeah, yeah, the play yeah. onto the right mm. that it leaves all that play... And then they switch it back quickly and they've, 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 they've got all that space. But it's been a difficult season for them. But as you said, the, the assists, which are mostly corners, aren't mm. they? The assists are brilliant. The in-swinger has been a really good tool to the back post. Mm. Um, it's like a special teams, isn't it? Well, Evan have used that 44% yeah, and, of their and, corners and, and, being that back And post. listen, hopefully next season he comes back refreshed and... Full pre-season. Full pre-season. And go. all this... It was lovely to see him walking around the pitch on the last game of the season with his, with his with partner. His, with his yeah, partner. And, yeah. and that, that side of things back, is good yeah. to see. Good to see. Um, and hopefully next season he has a full season, mm -hmm. he has a full crack at it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I do think there is potential 
to to get so much more out of it. I still think he could play in the ten off the striker though. I just think he needs to get to Finch Farm and kick a ball with his right foot against mm. the wall for an hour every day. But just, the reason why I'm saying that is because of those areas we saw the Forest go. Mm. He was yeah. basically central, wasn't he? Brentford, he hit that rocket that hit the yeah. underside of the bar and came on. I think he's because he can shoot I really think well. Technically, I think he's a really good footballer. Yeah, left I foot. just don't. Left foot, I just don't know how he's gonna. He needs to work out, or they need to work out how he's gonna put it all together, mm. or what position he's gonna play in to yeah. get the most out of him. And I've, you know, there is a thing where you go, we'll play him in the Decorey role. But mm. if he plays in the Decorey role mm. and he can only go one way, yeah. whereas when he's playing off the left, he can drift in and mm. create that space, and it has worked. It's how we get the best. I out just of it. think when you, if you're looking at the team going forward, you want more. Michalenko no, would of course. Well, but we need yeah. more from our wide Listen, players, don't this, we? I, but I do think he's someone who can move. But, but don't forget, he was a mm. he was a number eight. And yeah. he, he obviously he's he, not. He's listen. He ain't a left he's winger. Not a left he ain't a left winger. There's not a chance he's a left winger because no. he hasn't got any pace for a start. So the, his, his sofa score rating is 7.24, but it will be because of the goals and the assists. But I, he, listen, he's had a solid, a solid enough season. I, I think you're right. I mm. think it, it was peaks and troughs, and he was yeah. obviously going through a lot as well. But um, 50 touches a game. He's created, though, over the season, 17 big chances. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I mean that's a, a lot of them. You're right, a lot of them are corners, but even so, it doesn't. You need someone to do that. Uh, 1.3 tackles a game. Uh, no errors leading to goals, which is good. Uh, just looking at anything else on uh, passing accuracy. Where are we with that? Um, 78 percent, but it will be a bit mm. lower. But uh, moving on quickly onto Jack Harrison, who obviously came on loan from Leeds United. Mm. These are Jack's numbers. 29 Premier League games. This season, three goals again, an XE of 3.57. He's had three assists and from an XA of 3.56. Hard worker. I do think Everton should have given him a few more games off the left-hand side. Mm. I think he's, he's very comfortable. I know he's, he's all right on the right, but I think it would improve his game more mm. off the left. How do you think he's done for a loan? I think he was sound. I know he's had moments where... Mm. He hasn't had very good games, but other games. I, but he, one thing you know with Jack Harrison, sorry, is that yeah. he's gonna wear his socks off regardless. I, I, I of think. I think. Plays. I think the fact that he's played over thirty games in all competitions is is what is the most important thing mm. for him. Yeah. Um. I think. You know, he's been. He's been in and out. Mm. He is a. He's a very frustrating player. Mm. Again, I'm not sure. A hundred percent, the style has suited him. No. But he does, he does have the attributes for Sean Dyche, which is he works hard, he doubles back, mm. helps the full back, and he plays a lot of games. Mm. And I think they are the most. He, there's a level of consistency that is part of the reason why he's why he's played so many games. It's just that level of consistency. You know, sort of know what you're gonna get. Is he quite a seven? No, but he's more like a six and a half mm. every week. And I think that's the sofa score rating six point eight one. No, oh, that's not bad. That's mm. not bad. That I've just you know. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Three quarters. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's just yeah. under a seven, and I think, I think that's sort of just enough for this team. Mm. That's whereas if someone else had filled that role, you might get an eight once every five or six games, and then would be a five. Mm. Whereas I think that level of consistency, what he does for the team, is massively important for mm. Sean Dyche because I think Sean Dyche's whole ethos is based on. A level of consistency. We we know that from the XG stuff. They only like, looked once this season as well. Who gives the monkeys? Has that got to do with the price of fish? I'm just saying. He doesn't give cheap free kicks away or Has silly fouls away. Come on, Baz. I think you're scraping the barrel there. I'm mate. not. I'm just telling you. It I'm feels just, like you're scraping the barrel. I'm just it feels like you went out, bought a barrel just to scrape. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you. Average is 1.2 yeah. shots a game. Come into the come into the club late as well, didn't of he? Of course, he was injured. So yeah, he was injured till till till. So he's missed out on a pre-season. Scored Everton's goal of the season. Let's be honest. I know it was given to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Given your the goal of the season. Nate, who scored a better goal than that? Who's Dominic Calvert-Lewin? Oh, you weren't there. Sorry, where you? Oh, you a header that? off a corner. You were probably at Epcot yeah. tasting the wine and yeah. the cheese. A header off a corner beat a twenty-five yard chip back in over the goalie. Of course, I mean, you're adding a few yards there. Five yards. It was just on the 18 yard box. Five uh, big chances created. Goal of the season, like I said. <laughs> Pass and accuracy. Passes goal of the season. 73 goal of the season. Uh, 1.3 tackles a game. 
4.4 ball recoveries, yeah, all, all work. Um, we'll see Everton are trying to get him back on loan. Don't we'll you see. think Dwight McNeil's goal against Forrest was better than that? No, it was a, great, it was a good strike. But again, you, you, you were there, there. So, again. Well, there you go then. There you go. That, that's probably on Again, the... Jack Harrison's best goal. Um, let's move on to Arna Danjuma, who we all had high hope. Well, we had some hopes for, but it hasn't quite worked out. Uh, 14 games Danjuma was involved in. One Premier League goal, that was at Sheffield United. It's an important goal as well. Uh, from an XA of 2.62. No assists from an XA of 0.41, I think that might be. Uh, Arna Danjuma, I have to say, the biggest disappointment for me this season. Because I thought he would... I didn't think he was going to come in and be amazing. No, I didn't. But I thought he'd come in. I thought he was going to be our top goal scorer, apparently. Yeah, you did. Yeah, so you just thought you, he wasn't going to be amazing. Ergo, the top goal scorer for Everton. Oh, you, you, you said he wasn't going to be amazing? I didn't say that. Did you? I said I didn't think he was going to be amazing. You went, no, no I didn't. I was just agreeing with you. I was just, I was, What's agree happening here? I was agreeing with you. What thinking, is that? I was here? agreeing with what you. Like Dom's header was a better goal than a 25 yards. I was just, I was just agreeing with you on you thinking he wasn't going to be amazing. Okay, I thought he would add some goals. No, and I, some I, I, and a bit I, of I thought he'd be us. good because clearly he, I said he was going to score 11 goals this season. Mm -hmm. But um, what I mean, just did that, did he? <laughs> the manager just doesn't like him. Mm -hmm. We just talked about Jack Harrison and. The fact that, we, well, I mean, that's what we're basically talking about, aren't mm -hmm. we? We're talking about two wingers who've got a level of consistency that is more than the manager having a player who might get, uh, uh, might have a, a good game every five, six games, whatever mm. it is. But you're not going to get the chance with this manager, right? That's not a criticism. No, no, you're not. Dice, you're, you're not. The you manager, got to work the manager hard doesn't, to the manager clearly doesn't work off, you know, the cuff he works on. He works on a basis of players mm. given a level of performance every week. And that level of performance creates a certain amount of opportunities. And with those opportunities, you'll say, score a certain amount of goals. Mm. And through all that data, you will you'll get where you want. And that's what the manager stressed all season, hasn't he? And talked about XA and XG, and the XG hasn't quite matched up to it. Mm. But that's what he talks about. And, yeah, yeah. And he's... You know, I don't know whether he's got John Blaine's supercomputer or whatever, but he's, he works he works on those kind of no, ideas, does, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. And players like Dan Juman who aren't who can't do that job week in and week out are not gonna be part of it. No. And ultimately that's what football, you know, all the nerds with the computers and the playing football manager in the back room, you know, get jobs out of it and stuff, and then they're too big to appear on shows like this anymore and give their permission to put shows out. We know who they are. You know, they're the ones who've ruined football and and, and, and that's where we are as a football club. Um and ruined other football clubs as well. Um <laughs> But that's 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 oh, what yeah. the man that's where the manager looks at, doesn't he? He looks at a level of performance. That is tongue in cheek, by the way, for people get upset. Really does. <laughs> <laughs> Not what Preston fans think. No. Um it's a level of performance, and Dan Juma couldn't produce that, mm. and obviously wasn't producing it in training. And listen, as I said, Atisha Garner Gay's levels may have gone up just because he wanted to do the the snake the thing. Snake, yeah. So, nah, very disappointing, isn't it? But it mm. did feel like we've done all the hard work. We we better sign this lad. Felt like an easy easy yeah. signing, didn't it? And I mean, from his perspective, Milan or Everton, he come to Everton, which was a bit of a still looking thing. Why? Like, why it must be? I don't know. Don't Milan off them, apparently. Off. But anyway, listen. I think maybe, like you said, all that work had done. I think the Charles and bugging him every day at top and saying you let Everton down, which is what he said every day. Um, yeah. Might have yeah. played a part. He only started five games no. for Everton. His minutes per game average. Scored well, a very important goal at Sheffield United. Did though. from an XG of two point six two. No. Remember when he scored two in a week and we were all thought we had the new Messi. <clears throat> <laughs> created one, what, like the new Mac Messi? Created one big chance. Um, no, it's, ball, it's very disappointing. Uh, and it is what it is, and he'll go, he'll go back <clears throat> now to. Uh, I hope, I just hope that Gate takes the number ten shirt in, in tribute and just keeps that. Just keeps that eight next number year ten shirt. Just get that. Snake. Give Disagana Gate the number ten now. It is, isn't it mad how he seems to love Ghana, like yeah. love them. And get the goat and give it all. He was living his best life. He for was, Ronnie. Garner was, was like, I know life. you're not going to play Saturday. I'll, so do, it I'll do it for you. I'll turn into yeah. the play you should have been. And also, the don't forget, like, he had a bad injury that, he, like, and he might have played more. He played well at Fulham. 
and in yeah. the last minute got injured. Maybe the penny had dropped and it was just like... But then he come back from injury and the manager had mentioned the low times and didn't play him once. It was so weird. What was weird was, yeah, near the end. But then it was weird because obviously we were safe with... Yeah. After that Luton game, we were safe, weren't we? And yeah. he didn't get on the pitch. It was almost like... It was so weird. He's yeah. going like, anyway. You don't deserve this. It was like that, wasn't it? Mad, it? It was the same way that anyone who'd been, re who'd been released didn't go to Arsenal. It was just like, lads, you have been released. I don't need you. Get off. I save money. Train ticket. On the train, yeah. You've got, got to. Well, you've, you've, got got look, got you've got to look at all that. Um, that's why Everton only got one-way train tickets. Everyone else could go off on holiday. XT. Expected train. The expected train cost. Yeah, yeah. XTC. Yeah. Save money. Um, I think, like, just to wrap up, mm. what that shows you there is Adrissa Garner Gay scored more than all of the midfield. Mm. A player who nobody... Depends what your class is a midfielder. <laughs> Oh, the reason why I'm saying yeah. it, not necessarily Onana or mm. James Garner or Andre Gomez. The we, line, we've man. included the three the wide men who played. I mean, quite controversially, Ned hasn't put Lewis Dobbin in there. Is he in the forwards? Well, he is now. He, he is, is now. now. He is yeah. now. Dobbs will be included in the yeah. forwards. But what I mean is yeah. that highlights, doesn't yeah. it? That we no, need well, more from wide players. What did they get between them? Six, was it? Mm. Dan so Juma, like, seven goals between the three. Yeah. Garner got more than 50% of that. Yeah. Grim. So we need more. That's yeah. an area we yeah. need more in. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Who was your midfielder of the year? Do we need more from our wide men or anything we discussed? The answer is yes. And if you put no, do. then go, you might as well go and change a channel. <laughs> I don't think we have people like that watching. I think there are people watch. Yeah, I'm trying to get to 100,000. No, I know, but they're not going to. They all know. They're educated. People. They all know. And I'd just like to put an apology to Andy. I love you. Is that Andy. who you were talking What? What are you talking about? I haven't said the surname. What are you on about? Andy are anymore. you saying I was talking to someone deliberately there? It felt like. No. Personal. He wouldn't be watching this anyway. This no. is under him. Yeah, yeah. He's such a snob. <laughs> See you later. Hit the thumbs, like, and do all that. See you after. Bye-bye.